a centuries the world has been speaking about Africa and Africa has been listening. This is the time Africa must speak and the world must listen. I want to believe that Africa has all it takes to become or to join the world economic superpowers. I do believe that this belief is not far from the reality. However, still I would, I would like to give a quick anthology about what Africa contains in terms of intellectual capital as well as human resources that Africa has not been missing from many years back in history. The 20th century has presented to us some personalities with intellectual capacity and they are referred to as African scholars or those who are the, at the back of the African philosophy or African legal thinking. I start with the founding father of the nation of Senegal or the Republic of Senegal, that is Leopold Sedar Senghor, an African who taught French to the French people during his early days. He was a poet, a philosopher, a historian, a writer, and one of the African intellectuals who founded the philosophy of negritude. Well, Sadar Senghor worked using poems and he established Senegal as a nation of people. And we see his democratic thinking and his intellectual capacity working wonders in that part of Africa. Well, still, I want to believe that such personalities as a Messeser who wrote so much about Africa and Africanness and a Messeser in his well and mostly read book known as Keye a Retour au Pays Natal that is a notebook on the return to the native land or the homecoming. It has been translated in many languages. The book, which is a poem, gives that imagination of the diaspora and how much they wish to come back home. Africa is home for them. Another writer, philosopher and thinker a French from Martinique and a philosopher who thought so much about Africa and being African and when he wrote his book The Wretched on Earth that book is well read and translated into different languages another masterpiece that he wrote is Black face with white masks. This is a question of these double faces that are seen in Africa in the sense that a black man but with a white mask is like colonization of the mind and the psyche. Okay, Fanon or Franz Omar Fanon was a philosopher but a psychiatrist which is something very healthy to talk about in the sense of decolonizing the mind by Professor Ngugi Wathiongo and uh, moving the center that he talks passionately about. We have so much of such brilliant African sons and daughters, those who have impressed the world with their thinking,
philosophical thinking and in this case it challenges the perception that Africa is pre-logical, Africa is pre-legal just to mean that Africans cannot generate rational thinking that would be considered as philosophical thinking or philosophical ideas. In the same note, we see the reactions towards the African customary law by non-Africans who refer to it as repugnant or against the general morality or against the humanity. These are all negative presentations or misrepresentations of the entire continent and the contribution and achievements of the continent. The continent has achieved so much that the world must be cognizant of. I would start by arguing that the charity begins at home. It is us Africans to start acknowledging ourselves, acknowledging our thinkers, our philosophers, our poets, our Nobel laureates, our professors, researchers, scholars, and let us love their achievements and productions. Let us get closer to telling our story to the world. The world is ready to listen. Let us be sure of this. But unfortunately, or rather paradoxically, in Africa, some of those intellectual and highly valued personalities do not find an enabling environment back at home. This is what I refer to as the cultural gap and what is causing what people refer to generally as brain drainage. That is, such brilliant brains seeking survival outside the continent. Some are forced to be in exile by their governments. Some are deported forcefully. Some are psychologically put under pressure to leave the continent. This would be something indeed very sad and not worth talking about. What I would like to address here is, as Africans, we must be the first to appreciate our cultures, to appreciate what our culture has generated, what it has produced. Professor Madai Wangari from Kenya, who won a Nobel Peace Prize on the environment and the first African woman to be given that global recognition. We still have so many. Professor Wole Soinka, a scholar and accomplished person who talks about African culture and especially the sense Africans have about the humanity. And he has global and international acknowledgement and this is again must be replicated within Africa that is the homecoming coming back to the native land Nelson Mandela such accomplished leader should be a hero an icon in our libraries in our cities Julius Kabarage Nyerere the founding father of Tanzania should be honored and acknowledged across the continent. Hail Selassie, the emperor of Ethiopia, should be acknowledged. Dr. Kwame Nkrumah and Dr. Kenneth, uh, Dr. Kenneth Kaunda of Zambia, and we have even Peter Mudareka of Malawi, who is a learned and one who has been in presidency. We have got so many, and most of them do not have any role in politics, any role in the societal structures, but all the same, they need to be acknowledged, recognized, and be utilized 
by the African people and the African governments. This is addressed to the African Union and its structures that need to spearhead its 2063 development agenda. If this means prosperity for the continent, more solidarity, more integration of the continent, it must mean so much about individual Africans. It must serve Africans as individuals. It must deal with illiteracy, poverty, diseases, inclusiveness, inclusive politics, and generate an Africa that will have mutual understanding and appreciation among Africans themselves. Before we think of free market Africa, before we think of African economic superpower, African technological superpower, Africa that would be launching satellite into the international space, we must think of the standards and status of the individual Africans living in Africa. This is where we get it wrong and we must get it right by rebranding Africa, by telling nice stories, by giving our input out there, our research products, and also empowering our educational institutions the lecturers, teachers, educators, professors, scholars, they need to be acknowledged and recognized by the bigger institutions. This is my input, my tech, and in this manner we'll develop the African culture which will form the basis for any economic development. Peter here, University of Nairobi School of Law, Kisum Campus. I ask you to sign up and join our intellectual conversations. Thank you for watching and bye.